Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will discuss about Z transform of standard signals. In my earlier videos of this video lecture series, I have already derived Z transform of standard signals. In this video, I will explain how to understand equations of Z transform for standard signals as well as I will explain how to remember equations of Z transform for standard signals. The reason is this Z transforms that we will be using it in future coming videos to solve examples. If you talk about examples based on competitive examinations like GATE, UGC NET, ISRO or BARC examination, then in that we need to use these equations directly. In competitive examinations, you cannot go for a derivation of those Z transform. It will take more time, right? So here what I'll do is I'll explain you Z transform of function. Let me talk about first function that is impulse function. Here we have impulse delta of n and this impulse that is there at n is equals to zero. So for this Z transform is one. But if you have impulse that is having shifting as per delta of n minus m, then Z transform is Z to the power minus m. Let me give you one more example. Like if you have delta of n plus m in this situation, Z transform will be Z to the power plus m, right? So with respect to shifting over here, you will have to provide power with Z, right? If you have minus m as per shifting, then here Z to the power minus m will be there. If you have plus phi over here, then Z to the power plus phi will be there, right? That is how Z transform will be there with impulse signal. Now I'll talk about step signal. See here we have unit step signal u of n. For this you need to remember this equation and I have already derived this equation. Z transform of u of n that is 1 divided by 1 minus Z inverse. And you can also write this in form of Z. If you take Z inverse is equals to 1 by Z, then this will be Z divided by Z minus 1. But you need to remember this 1 divided by 1 minus Z inverse, right? And this is right sided unit step signal. U of n means what? Range is there from 0 to positive infinity. So that is right sided signal, right? If you talk about unit step signal, that is left sided signal which is minus of u of minus n minus 1 that is having same z transform here again you need to be careful see here i have mentioned minus of u of minus n minus 1 right that is having z transform that is 1 divided by 1 minus z inverse so both of this signal that is having same z transform this is left sided unit step signal i have seen students are doing mistake in competitive examination like if you, if they ask you find Z transform of U of minus N minus 1, then that is 1 divided by Z inverse minus 1, right? Or you can say that is Z divided by 1 minus Z. But here we have minus of U of minus N minus 1 that is having same Z transform as it is there with U of N. This is what you need to take care of, right? Now I'll discuss about Z transform of N into U of N. So that will be Z inverse divided by 1 minus Z inverse square, right? And if you place Z inverse is equals to 1 by Z, then it will be Z divided by Z minus 1 square. So this is what we will be using it in future coming videos. Just note down this. Now let me talk about Z transform of A to the power N U of N. See here we have A to the power N. So if you talk about this equation and if you compare it with U of N, then See, along with Z inverse, here you need to multiply this A, right? Here if you have A to the power minus N, so in that situation, here you will have to multiply A inverse along with Z inverse, right? So these are the basic points that you should take care of. And one should remember this. See, with U of N and with minus of U of minus N minus 1, equations are same. So along with minus of u of minus n minus 1, if you multiply a to the power n, then that is having same z transform as it is there with this. So here as if you have a to the power n, then multiply a along with this z inverse, right? 
Now I'll discuss about Z transform of n into a to the power n u of n. So along with a to the power n u of n, if you multiply n, then here you can observe Z transform that is a z divided by z minus a whole square. If you compare this equation over here, then you see here we are multiplying a with z and instead of 1, here we have a. That is how you can remember this by comparing both, right? And if you have minus of n into a to the power n u of minus n minus 1, then that is having same z transform as it is there with u of n. So you need to compare this. See, u of n and minus of u of minus n minus 1, both are having similar understanding, right? Similar equations will be there. Now I'll discuss about one more equation that is n square into u of n. So if you observe, see with n into u of n, we have z divided by z minus 1 whole square. Here if you have n square, then in denominator we will be having cube and in numerator you need to multiply z plus 1, right? So that is how in sequence you can remember these equations. That is quite useful in competitive examinations, right? Now, let me talk about equations which are based on sine and cosine. In my earlier videos, I have derived equations for cosine function. Similarly, one can derive it for sine function as well. Here I'll explain you comparison of both. Like if you have cos of omega and u of n, then for this function, I have already derived this equation that is z into z minus cos omega divided by z square minus 2z cos omega plus 1. And if you multiply a to the power n over here, then equation will be z into z minus a cos omega divided by z square minus 2z a cos omega plus a square. And both of these equations that I have derived in my earlier videos, just go through it. Here if you verify this, like you see here a is equals to 1 that is given. If a is equals to 1, just place 1 over here, just place 1 over here, then that is this equation only. Right. So you can say like by remembering this equation, you can remember this even. Right. So just remember this equation a to the power n cos omega and u of n that is having z transform that is z into z minus a cos omega divided by z square minus 2z a cos omega plus a square. Right. Now let me explain you sine function. See sine omega and u of n z transform that is z sin omega divided by z square minus 2z cos omega plus 1. So denominator that is same for sine and cosine function, numerator changes. See numerator here we have z sin omega and if you multiply a to the power n with sin omega and u of n, then here we have z a sin omega divided by z square minus 2z a cos omega plus a square. So denominator that is same for both, right? numerator changes. In cosine function, we have z into z minus a cos omega, while in sine function, we have z a sine omega. So that is how we should be remembering these equations and we'll be using these equations in future coming videos to solve problems based on z transform. And usually we use these equations in competitive examination. So if you are preparing for competitive examination, then just make a list of these equations. We will be directly using these equations. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Still, if you have any query, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.